Oh, wait a minute. My Mac Mini is disappeared. Put that right there. Boom. All right. Let's see if I can enter full screen. So this was my high school talent show back in 2013. Yo, they got this thing in 60 frames per second. By the way, this is my dad's idea. I'll never forget this. This was 2013, exactly 10 years ago. But look at this. I had the one at an LPD8, the Windows laptop. From less. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a fro at this time. I remember doing this, and it was like so crazy. Cause I was like, yo, I'm playing my beats in front of people. Full DJ hands, yeah, I had the whole D. And look how low the table was. Yeah. the wildest beats like for a four minute span. Now hilariously enough, this was December. This was December 2020. 12, 2013. Was the crowd hype? Oh, just wait for this. I was just playing some crazy stuff. the coolest thing I ever I don't even think the kids knew what to do they're just like the table is so low okay finally someone said it that table's low as all get out Did it get lower Why? they turned my sound down I was like I was so upset school talent show i'll never forget that was like the coolest that was the coolest thing but i, I i'm i think about my, my high school talent show and that that year that was like one of the best years that i had had that was when i came out with the whole molly cyrus joint sounds like the girls liked you it, it they, they I, I think they did <laughs> i think they did but you know, I, I, I like, I realized like, and this is the cool, this is the craziest part about like, just my story, not 
just kind of explain it for a bit before we get deep into the Twitch stream. I feel like I've had a mixture of both great experiences in not really great experiences with music and it was more so like my experience with it it wasn't always like that you know what i'm saying um yeah you know and, and i say that lightly because i do actually have a story so uh that year 2013 i was gonna graduate in 2015 and i had an opportunity to play the very next year now, I don't know what it was, but I guess the year prior, everybody talked about how I was dancing and, you know, kind of vibing down, just playing the craziest beats for like a full four minutes. And so I guess they were expecting me to do that again the following year. And I also have that video too, but I wasn't really like trying to dance. And it was primarily because, I mean, you guys saw how low that table was. I was uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable. And it wasn't even uncomfortable because I, like, you know, played my beats in front of people. It was my first time doing it, but at the same time, I, like, needed to be comfortable on a stage. Like, my back was killing me after that. Like, y'all saw how hard I was bopping for four minutes? Mind you, I was only, like, roughly, like, 16, 15 years old. But my back was killing me that day. I'll never forget I got home... And it felt like I did like an ab workout, you know? Um, but yeah, the expectations were high and the table was low. I didn't want to dance. And I guess for whatever reason, um, you were 80 degrees, you were 90 degrees 90% of the time. Yeah, I know. But here's the craziest part. This is the story. So this is the story, right? I remember after that second year, I played the show. And I didn't get necessarily the same reception. And I think what, it didn't really affect me, but I did know that like everybody else kind of like wasn't really feeling what I was doing anymore. And so senior year, that was my junior year. The next year after that video you just watched, I was a sophomore the following year, was junior and senior year. I was like, I want to go off with a bang, okay? So I remember senior year comes, talent show comes, and I remember they were like, yo, man, what would be great is if you did what you're doing but incorporate a drum kit. Now, if anybody has ever seen me live and perform live, y'all know I have, like, my laptop, my controller, and a drum kit on the side of me. It's like the thing I do in all my shows. Um, but I remember my senior year, I was like, I want to end off my high school career with a bang at the talent show. So senior year comes. Senior year was a really, really rough year, by the way. It was just, it was just nuts. I had went through a really weird breakup with uh, my ex uh, best friend at that time. And it was just, it was terrible. I was on, I was in also like, I was on the high school basketball team. And <laughs> uh, I remember like when everything went down, it was just like my high school basketball team was just like trying to encourage me and I wasn't playing basketball too. So imagine being on a basketball team. You're not playing. Your ex breaks up with you. You're trying to understand what's going on. And then on top of that, you want to have a good show for the talent show. So I went to try it out. I went to try out and everything. And... Um, I remember I tried out, I brought my drum kit in that classroom. All of my, my high school senior friends were all in the room. I played the drum kit, went and played the beats at the same time. And, uh, you know, they went and checked the list. And I remember that after they posted the list of who made all the talent show acts, I wasn't one of the people on the act list. that They, they, didn't, they didn't show my name. And I remember I went through all of this hassle to, like, bring my drum kit. And I'm like... Dang, like I, I went through all this work. So this is the worst part. I went all the way through and I remember one of the teachers contacted me and they were like, yo, what would be really, really cool is if you did like a 10 minute set to warm everybody up for the acts. So in my mind, I was like, 
Dang, bro. 10 minutes? Oh, that's way better. That's way better than four minutes to do a whole set. So I'm thinking like 10 minutes for like a month. For like a month. Between, not even a month, like a week. I think it was like a week before the tryouts and then the show is going to be that following week after. Um, I told my dad, I was like, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to rent some speakers. We're going to take the speakers from a church. We're going to get, uh, I'm going to have a monitor for the drums. I'm going to have my DJ stuff exactly how I do right now. I'm going to have everything set up, right? And my dad was like, okay, cool. So he got a good deal. We rented these speakers. We rented all this gear. And I'll never forget, we ended up like, I like, we did a whole test run in the garage. Like this house, we did a whole test run in the garage. Like my dad's like, yo, this sounds crazy. I had like the intro for, um, and just to give you guys a consensus of what came out after this, the Kalen Ellis EP with uh, Knights of the Round Table. It's this orange album cover of like my face and stuff. That was like a selfie I took back in high school and that was like the same week. I sent that and that became the EP, but I was playing those beats during this show. So like, this was gonna be like a major thing. Like I graduated high school, I'm talking to guys that work with K-Tronada and the, the uh, Knights of the Round Table, which was basically home wouldn't wear. Um, pre Mockwell, this was, I was doing like this trap fusion, bro. This was like right after Miley Cyrus. I was doing that. That was like, I was hella experimental. But I started incorporating my drums and that was all I wanted to do. Now, now that I've painted the picture of what that is, let me tell you guys about the senior night. Not senior night, but the senior show. I'll never forget. It was about 6 a.m. and they said, we're gonna start the show at the top of the day. And I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's, let's, let's get into it. So I, I, had my, I had my old car. I used to drive a 2009 Toyota Yaris. It was a very small kind of like compact car, but it had a lot of space in it. I had a first act drum kit, full kit by the way. Tom, snare, three cymbals, hi-hat. Um, whole thing was tuned to the nines, right? And so I'm thinking like, okay, what would be great is if I go in to the school and I say, hey, like I need to put my gear in the room before the show starts. Cause it's only 6 a.m. and the show starts at like 9.30. So I'm thinking like, okay, it would be great. I set up and get a little sound check in. After sound check, I'm ready to do the show. Nobody showed up to that, that building until about eight o'clock, eight o'clock. The show starts at nine. I got speakers, I got drums. My dad is also there waiting and nobody came to the theater to like let us in. And so I'm thinking like we only got a hour and 30 minutes until this show begins and I haven't set up a thing. So I'm already like pressure up, right? My homie is like ready to do the show. I saw him walk in the hallway. He looks past me. Hey, Kate, what's going on? I'm like, I'm like laser tunnel vision. Like I need to get this gear on the stage. Like I need to get it right now. And so they end up letting the uh, theater open. One of the teachers opens the door. All the people that are, are, are ex, my homie JC, uh, another homie named Wade, another a couple, a bunch of other homies, uh, Fabian, shout out to Fabian Garcia, incredible dancer, by the way, one of the GOAT dancers, he's also a DJ too, so he's one of the most talented gentlemen I've had a pleasure of, like, hanging with back in high school, um, and, uh, yeah, I had a bunch of homies that were, <laughs> that were doing the gig, now here's the craziest part. I like kind of helped everybody in a way with setting up their sets and even what they did for the songs. I produced a song with JC. JC performed a song with his uh, ex at that time. They He performed a song for her. Um, I remember Wade, I like helped put his whole set together, putting the songs next, uh, the same JC, the singer. Nah, nah, this isn't, you. y'all probably have no idea who this guy is, but he's one of my best friends. Um, but yeah, I helped Wade with his song, his uh, his set list. He's been here to the crib 
Shout out to Wade. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other people that like, you know, needed help with their sets. And I realized like I was like helping everybody who was an act with their show. Like, and so everybody like, you can only imagine like I'm trying to set up a drum kit. Everybody had their own thing. And, and mind you, this might not might have prefaced this. We all had time to dedicate working time on their own performances. Someone did a, uh, 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 I forgot what that girl's name was, but I actually helped. Actually, you know what? You know what? I might remember her name by before the end of the Twitch stream, but she, her name is Bella Pierce. B uh, not Bella Pierce. Oh my God. Why did I say Bella Pierce? Something Bella. Something Bella. I'm blanking. <laughs> I'm blanking. I'm trying to remember her name. Um, but she lives out in L.A. She's a singer. She's she's doing it independently, and she's heavy in the alternative and, and indie. But I remember Bella. I helped her. I helped all, I helped everybody with their their. I helped everybody with their their sets, and I remember I just wanted to set up my drums so I could play and test out the gear. My dad brought the speakers in random female name. Nah, man, let me, I'm telling you, telling you, her name is Bella. She's, she's by far one of the dopest female singers I've had a pleasure of meeting back in high school. So, um, but yeah, so talent show, I set up my drums, I set up the speakers, I set up everything. And one of the craziest part is, we didn't finish until about 9.15. Everybody's on the stage. The teacher was like, hey, man, let's let's close the curtains so we can begin what we're doing. And when they closed the curtain, they closed it right in front of the DJ table, right in front of the drum kit, right in front of all the gear. The only thing you could see out on the stage were the two speakers. And what made it even worse, when they opened up the curtains, everybody was on stage. Like, everybody. Like all the acts, everyone that was supposed to be performing, they didn't clear the stage. They were all on the stage. So when they opened up the curtains, nobody could see me on the drum kit. And it, dude... I was crushed because like I want to have I want to play my music, but no one's clearing the stage. I was like, y'all get off the stage like we're about to start the show. I'm running the sound. They're like, hey, can you turn the sound down? Da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. Turn the sound down a little bit. I didn't even get a chance to do my 10 minute set before the show. So already. Everything about the day has already started to turn to a sandwich. And I just, I just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't wrap my head around it. I was just like, what went wrong? What went wrong? But you know, <clears throat> all of my buddies performed an incredible show. Wade had an insane show. JC had an incredible show as well. I got a chance to play drums with my homie Ben. He plays keys. He's incredibly, incredibly gifted at playing. And I just, I was just so perturbed because I, I was upset because I didn't understand what happened. So the whole show goes down. Everybody performs. All the people come on stage. And then they go shout out to Kaylin. I'm in the back of everybody behind my DJ booth controlling all the music. And nobody saw me at all. Went home. Matter of fact, matter of fact, before I even get to that point. Show ends. I'm like sitting in the back. I'm heated. My dad realized I was upset. <laughs> I was heated, bro. And I remember I told my dad he checked me out of school. Because I think if I if I'm still here. With the combination of everything that has happened that year with my ex, basketball, talent show, I just needed one win, bro. I just needed one win. And I remember my dad checked me out of school, and we drove back. 
and I had to think about, okay, what were the positives? I managed to have my buddies, my friends, my great friends from high school. How old? I was 17. Just turned, just turned 17. Fresh. No, actually, you know what? 20. I was, I was 16. Like 16, 17. Eh. And I, I never forget. I told my dad after having those first two years where I performed. I told my dad. I was like. I never want to feel like this again because of poor planning. Poor planning. I didn't blame anybody for it. I didn't blame. It was just the way we planned everything to go down. It it was not what I expected. And now that I know what it feels like to be in that space of not feeling adequate, not feeling important, not feeling like your gift is valued. I had to think that was a learning curve for me because I had been experiencing these early like, okay, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Now I'm not, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know what what the low was going to be like. And I actually thank God for it because that that space, that season grew me as a person. Like, I realized, like, this was this was going to be the most rough part of my high school career at that time. And I remember thinking, like, okay, how can I turn this all into a positive? How can I turn this into a beautiful thing? Well, my homie JC, man, I, if anybody I would have loved to see have a music career, my best friend JC, because I, like, produced him in this room. We made the song that he performed at the talent show in this room. And I would have loved to see him like actually like do music as well as Ben. I would have loved to see those guys. But I realized that was like the stepping stone that I needed to give me the confidence to be like, you know what, I could keep going with this. Maybe it might not always pan out the way that I'm viewing it. Maybe the path that I need to take is a little bit different so I can learn how to get better. And sure enough, when I got the full sale, bro, I was ready. I was ready for whatever was about to happen. I was ready for shows. I was ready if gear didn't work. Man, listen, I'll do a whole gig mono, okay? You, y'all ever, like, had, like, a stereo system where the, 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 the sound system is in mono, and then when people play the music in stereo, it starts canceling out their signals? I've had to convert a whole show to mono, bro, like... I'm fully prepped because of what I went through in high school. Even before that, I grew up playing drums in church, but that's a whole nother thing. But if you ever feel like your gift is not like, if you ever feel like your gift is not seen and not paid attention to, there's people who are looking at you and there's people that look towards you. And if it isn't for what you do or the the example that you have, Like, you're an example to people that you don't know. And that was something that I had to, like, I had to, like, learn, bro. Like, not all wins are going to be in public. Sometimes you got to, you got to, like, lose in order to gain. Like, that experience taught me so much about being a better person and musician, dude. Did I go to an art school? Nah, bro. I went to I went to a, a school that was barely like, okay, if you do talk about the arts, maybe about acting, theater, but music? Nah, man. I was I was in a I went to a school out in Lakeland, Lakeland, Florida. You know, but it taught me a lot about work ethic, practice. You learn from failing. It hurts to fail. It does, bro. It hurts to fail, bro. It really, really hurts to fail, but you need it in order to win.